Everyone has a story. Stories have power. They help us understand each other. This is Jessup's Journal. Marshall, it's time to sign into Jessup's Journal. Hi, I'm Doug Jessup. In this episode of Jessup's Journal, I have Marshall Lee. Now, Marshall, full disclosure, is kind of my behind the scenes inside source. Okay, we'll get into that in a second. We've been doing the social distancing. We wore the mask. Yeah. You know, you got to do the hand sanitizing. Okay, you know, I've got the folks from Five Wise, and uh, yes, they do make adult beverages as well. Um, Spry. Spry. You got to love this stuff. This is like the broadcaster's friend, mouth moisturizing. So I, I think we're ready, ready to, to start talking. For people that don't know, what the heck do you do? <laughs> So as an executive producer, I basically am over the two hour show of Good Things Utah. It's okay. live from nine to 11 mm -hmm. every weekday. And, and my job consists of helping to book and write all the segments. I watch all the scripts and then during the show, I make sure that everyone is standing where they're supposed to, saying, what, saying the things they're supposed to say, making sure the guests are all there and accounted for. Um, I make sure that all the guests are shuffled on and shuffled back off and set up and... So you are the, what I would affectionately call the master puppeteer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest, I am shocked that you still have a beautiful full head of hair. Oh, because you're Because it's like... You're sweet. Ah! Oh, it's gray. It's gray. Yeah, it's just covered up with okay, hair dye. Well, it's gray. Okay. So <laughs> the reason why I wanted to bring you on is recently we did an interview with Nisha DeGaring. Yes who I kind of call the godmother of, of Good Things Utah. She's been around there for forever. And she talked about what happens in front of the camera, you know, and all that stuff. But I bet a lot of people have no clue what happens behind the camera, okay? So there's this one video that I did Okay. Um, that actually, and I don't think you knew I was doing it. <laughs> so, so I came into the master control room, okay. and there's, just so people know, there's this big wall of, of camera, you know, of screens and everything. There's lots of buttons and a whole bunch of people with air feds and a whole bunch of people pushing, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are basically the conductor, I guess is probably a better yeah. way to put it. Yeah, actually conductor is a good word for it because I'm sitting in the chair and sometimes I'm sitting in the chair, sometimes I'm, I'm on set. And so when you're in the chair, you have your headset on, you're talking to all the hosts, you're talking to the crew, you're talking to any live shots you have, you're making sure everybody knows how long they have to talk what they need to talk about, where they need to stand. I mean, that's all through the, the headset. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, I think conductor's a good word for it because we come up with the rundown. That's what we call it. The, the mm -hmm. show is the rundown. And um, then when we take it into the control room, the director is in there with us to help execute it. So it's, it's the producer and the director. And mm -hmm. the director helps to push, well, they push the buttons and they tell the cameras where to go um, according to the show that we've planned. Okay, so I'm gonna give people a little uh, inside view, and I'm going to put you on the spot here, so okay. I hope you know the okay, answer okay. to all this. Okay, <laughs> so there are how many hosts? So usually we have like four. Okay, so we, okay, have, so we have four, four there. Okay. Four. How many camera people do you have? Sometimes it varies. Sometimes we have three people on the cameras because we have three moving cameras, mm -hmm. and then we have a floor director, and then we have someone on teleprompter. Right. Um, so we usually have five. Sometimes we have four to six. Okay, six. what's a floor director do? My floor director is Jay. And he he's is awesome, amazing. by the way. He's okay. a celebrity. Shout out, Jay. Huh? Shout out. Yeah. Celebrity in his own right. Everyone loves him. Uh -huh. So um, Jay is the one listening to me and the director. He gives the commands out on set. Mm -hmm. And he mics everybody up and mics the guests mm -hmm. up. And then once we set up the tables for guests, he picks up the tables with the other crew mm -hmm. members and he puts it on set. And okay, so he goes the extra mile, though, and like oh, yes, helps he organize the kitchen. Oh, yeah. And keeps my head on straight when I, I always walk into wide shots or yes. drop my rundown. 15 seconds, stand by. <laughs> to, to put it into sports terms, I would say that he is kind of the guy that is giving the signal. Yeah. You know, on the yeah. on the sideline of going, who's what the, uh -huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's funny because when I have people come on Good Things Utah, I, and everybody's different, but I have a requirement. Now, granted, this was pre-COVID. Right. Um, that everybody that's going to be on TV, unless you've been on TV before, you got to come see a show. Oh, yeah, you do that. Yeah. Because for us, this is what we do every day, and it's no big deal, no but big deal. can be kind of a little intimidating yeah. for other people. Okay, now, how about you can see them, but how about hearing them? 
so the director and the producer are right next to each other, and then there's plec well, there's glass, and then in a smaller room in the back, there's audio. Okay. Yep. And he turns on all the microphones. He makes sure that everybody that Jay mics up, mm -hmm. that he can hear them properly. He also makes sure that all the hosts, their microphones and their mm -hmm. IFB, which okay. is the way they hear me. Okay, now, okay. a lot of people say IFB, but they don't have a clue what the heck it means. It's funny. So I gotta see, <laughs> I know what it means. Okay. I was gonna say, please don't ask me what I'm IFB gonna ask means. You. Okay, <laughs> so IFB means interrupted feedback. It's, oh, okay. I, was gonna, I so, knew it was feedback, but I was like, it, yeah. intergalactic feedback. Yeah, just yeah. <laughs> woo, woo. Well, some of the shows we've done, maybe, you know, I was like, oh, no. Mars attacks. <laughs> yeah. And then there are the people that are sitting next to you. In the control room, the director's board now of buttons. It's just this rainbow of buttons and they're pushing all the buttons they're doing the technical directing really? while they're directing this cannot be just a left brain person or a right brain person you got to kind of put it all yeah. together yeah you okay. called me conductor i think of myself as kind of a circus <laughs> circus like a ringleader ring, but ring, not, ring. i'm more like i'm juggling i just okay. feel like i'm constantly juggling and just pretend i'm flawless at it uh -huh, never uh -huh. drop a okay. ball for the most part these shows are live. Yeah, okay. these shows are live. What challenges does having a live show versus having a tape show present? So I have worked on both, and um, I really prefer live because, really? yeah, I do. And I, it's because of the flaws. It's when things go awry, when things are not planned, um, that is when the magic happens. And I feel like that's when the hosts, which are incredible, and my other two producers mm -hmm. are incredible. I, I feel like that's when the TV magic is made and those moments are magic. And honestly, you can't, you can't plan them and you can't produce them. I'd like to produce, produce them in my head, mm -hmm. but when they go awry, they're, they're beautiful. So give me an example of some of the, those perfect moments that where it wasn't quite planned, but okay. man, that turned out fun. So I have one actually that just popped in my head. Um, we, so we have a host, Dina. She's okay. pregnant. She's about five months pregnant now. Yeah. She's adorable. And when we were doing her pregnancy slash gender reveal, we had this big box and we put the, the color mm -hmm. of confetti the, of the baby that she was having. So okay. it was going to be pink or it was going to be blue. And I got on a giant ladder and I hung it on the lights and, and I put Nisha in the segment because she was long enough to pull the string and right. the box was supposed to open and, and blow blue confetti all over the studio. And so, it was glorious. Be so glorious. So glorious. Uh -huh. And Nisha went to reveal. Three, two, two one. one. He pulled the string and the string pulled off. It fell off of the box. <laughs> and there's the box clear up there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So luckily it was Nisha and she just started hopping, hopping. in her high heels yes, uh -huh. until she grabbed the box and it opened up. But I just feel like that was the perfect example of, it, I couldn't have planned that better. Yes. It's funny. So, you know, good job, Nisha. <laughs> <laughs> I admit I put Nisha in some weird circumstances. Like for example, I asked her to go up in an airplane, a little Cessna, okay. and they had her do landings, you know, and everything. And they basically said, here, it's yours. You know, and I, I have to admit, I did tell the guy beforehand please bring her back safe I'm yeah. glad you're yeah, careful you know thank you so what are some of the crazier things that you have had so I haven't flown a plane thank goodness mm -hmm. but I do feel I do feel like some of my things are less crazy and just feel I feel more lucky I flew to New York for mm -hmm. um, a movie opening oh, the, good. yeah and that was nice I was able to to interview some of the celebrities in a movie and I I like doing that and I love I love being able to go to the events that I go to and meeting the people that I go to. Being very, very direct. Okay. Okay. People in the television business, unless you're in certain markets, we're not doing it for the money. Right. Okay, because you're mm, okay. <laughs> but we do get to meet some really, really <sighs> cool people. We do. Have you had any, for lack of a better term, fangirl moments? I've had a couple of really embarrassing ones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like for the most part, I'm professional and I can act like it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've met Zac Efron. He was amazing. I've met Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, and I, I was level-headed. Debbie Reynolds, mm. singing in the rain, incredible. I've always loved her. She's in my top five. I mean, Doris Day, Debbie Reynolds, Paul McCartney. You know, you give me the, I will fangirl over them. And mm -hmm. um, I found out Debbie Reynolds was coming in and a few of my, my coworkers were like, sure, Debbie Reynolds is coming in. And so I was like, yeah, 
you're right, sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. Debbie Reynolds. And when she came in, I just, I wanted to cry. I was shaking. I was ready. I feel like I'm getting red in the face talking about it now. I don't know what it was. She was sweet and classy and beautiful and wonderful. And she kind of swooped in and she was wearing this like flowy outfit. Maybe I'm romanticizing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just kind of freaked out. My entire crew was laughing at me because I was a producer at the mm -hmm, time mm -hmm. as well. And I, everyone laughed at me and it's fine. You said you had one when you were not. Oh, this in. is so much okay. worse, Doug. Okay. So much worse. <laughs> so, so I was 17 years old, mm -hmm. and I was um, I was in Europe. Okay. I was lucky enough to tour Europe when I was 17, and I was walking down the streets of London, and a greasy hair, and I was tired from tr you know traveling all day, and my group was standing mm. um, on the side of the road, and I happened to look over, and a double decker bus pulled up. Mm -hmm. And on the top level was in sync. <laughs> and okay. you have to remember, this is like the year 1999 in sync. Mm -hmm. This is massive. And I was mm -hmm. a huge in sync fan. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't just get red in the face and blush and, and gush. I screamed and was shaking like I was a fan of the Beatles back in the 50s. Like there you go. So, you did a Beatles moment. It was so intense. Oh. And I, you know, the, my pictures are shaky and they're yes. blurry, but I, Justin Timberlake's waving over the side of the bus. And <laughs> they even spoke to me. To try Serious? To, they tried to calm me down. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, you know, it was funny. Nisha <laughs> had an interview many moons ago with Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks, yeah. Okay, and then 20-some years later, she had another interview with him and reminded him about that yeah. moment. Just, I'm just thinking as a producer, I'm thinking, you know, that Justin Timberlake oh. ought to be invited onto the show. Come on. Well, I met Lance Bass last year. I think. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it had to be nine, yeah. uh, uh -huh, two uh -huh. years ago because of COVID. Did you tell but him that story? No. Oh, come on. I was so embarrassed still. <laughs> 20 years later, I did not say anything. I told his publicist mm -hmm. and she laughed hysterically and said, go tell Lance. And I oh, said, come on. no, I'm not telling Lance. I'm professional and grown up now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh, I'm so uh -huh. professional. Oh, okay. Now, some uh -huh. celebrities are not exactly what you envision. Or hope. Or hope, yeah. you know? And so you got to think the pressure on these people to always be on, on yeah. is kind of crazy. Were there any particular celebrities that you have mm. met that, I don't know if you would say they didn't make, meet expectations, but maybe they had some weird little quirks that you know they had to have all green m&ms or some weird crazy oh, thing like that yeah i mean i hate to call them out i love her but um when the first time i met jane seymour mm -hmm. she walked in and i was young and i maybe i just thought i was this like hot mm -hmm. young producer and i mm -hmm. i don't know i expected more but she walked in and she just kind of looked me up and down head to toe and back again and just like looked away from me and i was trying to talk to her about the segment and it didn't go very well oh, I'm sorry. yeah yeah. Well. And Tom Arnold was, I, I interviewed him, we interviewed him and that was an odd one. It just. Well, he's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No Tom offense. Arnold. That one probably wasn't was totally Tom, surprising Tom at the time. It's fine. We yeah, love him still. Know, it's, yeah. it's like, we've talked a lot about what you do professionally, but right. you know, everybody has this picture of us, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you've got such a cool job. I hear that so many times and yeah, and you know do. what we do, yeah. we do. But what people don't seem to realize sometimes is kind of the back end stuff. Right. There are about five organizations in the entire country, broadcasting wise. And that's changed a lot since when I started. Yeah. Um, and so there is that affectionate term of the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. In broadcasting, it's like three. Yeah. Okay. So you got to be really careful about what you do with your reputation. Yeah. If, if you do something stupid on the air or stupid off the, off the air, air. Online. people are, or yeah. oh she's online yeah. well, okay let's talk about that how does social media play with what you do because i'm i'm pretty sure that's a big part of your it's job huge. yeah it's huge um i feel like i mean i have to post every day you have to post every day on facebook and instagram and now we're trying TikTok at good things utah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> i saw that yeah um it's definitely a struggle because i it would be nice if maybe we had someone to do that, but mm -hmm. it's just additional. So it's the producers, the three of us, wow. the two producers and, and, and I po post everything and you have to do it every day. You have to make sure it's accurate and you have to do it in a way that 
puts everybody in a good light mm -hmm. because these people are gracious, gracious enough to come on the show. So we have all these wonderful um, restaurants and businesses and people that support us. So we try to post their things and it, it, it's hard. It's hard to pick and choose what to do. Yeah. I'm not, a, I am not a social media guru. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, I do my research online and I kind of take my own courses and try yeah. to keep up on the trends, but it's, it's an integral part of our job and web stories as well. Like, oh yeah, there's a lot of pressure oh, yeah. to yeah. be online because if you're not online and I feel like this in any industry right now, if you're not online, you're not in business. Would the stories that you do on social media, are there certain ones that get, for lack of a better term, picked up more? Um, nationally, I would say it's more recipes and celebrities. Oh, really? Okay. Um, locally, it's always if we have hosts together. And again, COVID's difficult, but when we have, mm -hmm. before COVID, and we had them all scrunched in one picture, or they were all doing something together, if we have several hosts, um, I think people can see how much we love each other and how much we love our jobs and how much we want to share that. And I yeah. think that that's picked up. Well, there's definitely a chemistry to that. Yeah. So. I'm so lucky. The, the team that I work with, I love them all. Yeah. They're, I'm very lucky. Well, talking about lucky, a lot of people don't know that you've gone through some pretty horrendous trials. Yeah. And, um, you know, so this is my journal, you know, and it's got marks all over the place. And I have a phrase that says, life comes with scars. Okay. You got one wicked scar. He's got a gnarly scar. <laughs> so, so I know this sounds funny and I'm not sure women want to talk about this, but tell me about your gnarly scar gnarly and what really happened. Scar. Oh, gosh, it was okay. So uh, when I was in Living Arizona, I was producing news and I would go into a, a script and I would leave the script and forget to go back. Or I would be standing there and my arms would go numb or my legs mm. would go numb or I'd have memory loss and I was living with constant headaches, but honestly, I was chalking it up to working overnights because graveyards will, yeah. they'll do it to you. Mm -hmm. um, but then I w had one bout of particularly bad headaches and I went to the doctor and she luckily ordered an MRI for me. And I went in and I found out that I had um, something called a Chiari malformation, which is basically a hole on top of your spinal cord and your brain is kind of smushing into it. Oh dear. Gnarly. Not good. So yeah, not good. Um, it's something that you're born with and I just didn't know and I'm not sure what, what activated the symptoms so quickly in, in Arizona, but it was just a spiral and it was hard to go to work and I couldn't do anything. Um, and so I had to get brain surgery and I, I happened to be in the best place for it. I had a great doctor and a great hospital. The surgery itself went well, but that night um, it didn't. It didn't go well. And but apparently in the middle of the night, I was on four doses of Dilaudid, which is basically f quadruple the dose of morphine. So I was basically on like probably 16 doses wow. of morphine. <laughs> and luckily my husband decided to stay there and he woke up randomly in the middle of the night and he said my eyes were cockeyed and my face was blue. Oh my gosh. And so he started screaming and shaking me and nurses came in and they were shaking me and, and I don't, the only thing I remember, literally the only thing is I remember opening my eyes and there was a woman screaming in my face and I think, I thought, let me sleep. You're being awfully rude. I'm sleeping. <laughs> okay. And then the, 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 then I have this like swipe to my, my husband and he was, his face was probably six inches from mine. And I just looked at him and thought, he looks like a wreck. I need to stay awake for him because he's a wreck. <laughs> I'll make sure that, 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 you know, that I'm okay. But that, and I don't remember anything after that. I don't remember anything for a week, but, but I'm here. And it was very close from what I, yeah, there's some debate on whether they should have brought in the crash cart. It, it, they never brought it in, but well, yeah. Okay. But that, now my nasty, my gnarly scar is yes. from the middle of my head down to the middle of my neck. But at the time I had to shave my head. Um, and so I'd wear a scarf with like half of a shaved head and everybody has a story. That one happens to be dramatic. It happens to be a story where you say brain surgery and the room kind of stops, mm -hmm. but everybody's got their own version of something dramatic. It might not be cockeyed and blue in the face in a hospital room, but it, I feel like everybody's got those. And, and honestly, there have been, you know, moments in my life where Oh, Doug, I said I wouldn't cry, but moments in my life were past then, even though that recovery was, it was a full year. I threw up for nine months and mm -hmm. I could barely make it to work, but I would say, you know, losing my dad four years ago is 
worse than that. <laughs> yeah, I'd go through brain surgery again multiple times to have him back. Well, you know, the thing that's interesting in Good Things Utah, a lot of the time, for good or bad, you guys end up going through things in life mm -hmm. in front of a camera. Yeah. You know, because I mean, I've, I've, you know, I think about Reagan. Yeah. You know, going through a nasty divorce. Yeah. You know, and Nisha with her issues. You know, then Allie dealing with infertility, and now yeah. she's got a baby. And we've and we've dealt with loss. So we lost a producer who was, I mean, she, Roxanne. She was with us for years, and she passed away of cancer. And that, yeah, I wasn't. I, I now wasn't, you're gonna make me cry. Cause I know. Roxy I know. was a sweetheart. She was the know? heart and soul. Yeah, it does make me wonder if by sharing these stories that somebody out there watching that's going through a real hard time mm -hmm. can say, I'm not alone. Yeah, I you hope know? so. I hope, I hope so because we, we do have so many fun times on the show. We have the best of times and then it is, I do, we hit hard topics and we have mm -hmm. hard situations come up and I do hope that those, those can reach out to people. And, and honestly, in this time, like this 2020 and 2021, I hope that not only can it, you can commiserate, but then we can all lift each other up and we yes. can experience the nice moments and those moments of levity and mm -hmm. um, those moments that we can kind of take ourselves out of that situation. Yeah. The name of this series is called Jessup's Journal. Mm -hmm. Rustico makes all my journals. And yeah, I wasn't kidding. This, they're gonna make one for you. It's gonna be look a lot nicer than this one because this one has got the scars and everything because they were gonna throw this piece of leather away. And I said, no, oh, I want this one because it's got all the gnarly, right. it's got a gnarly, gnarly scar. <laughs> and yes, I've got a gnarly scar and that's a whole nother story I'll talk to you about later. But they have a hashtag that I like to ask everybody. Marshall Lee, how do you want to leave your mark? I just want to make, it sounds so cliche, I just want to make people happy and I want to make the world a better place any little bit that I can. And I just want to be the best mom of three boys that I can be and snuggle them close and just help them be successful in life. Sounds good to me. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Got a couple of people we need to thank. Of course, again, you know, the folks at Rustico with the journals. Um, we've got the folks with the uh, Five Wives hand sanitizer. And yes, they do make adult beverages. And uh, Madam Panarini Gin, just so you know, the picture on there, this, this bottle's going with you. Not kidding, that is Brigham Young's son in drag. <laughs> just, just saying, you can go online and look. But th there is a story. Now, you know you think about washing your hands, but truly serious, have you thought about washing your nose? What? Clear nasal spray. They come to find out that this stuff up there, it helps prevent the COVID bacteria and everything from sticking to your nose. Cool. So that's kind of the biggest no-brainer. And then of course, Taylor Cooperative tries to make me look good with the wardrobe and JW Custom Hats. Here's what I want people to remember. Everyone has a story. Stories have power. They help us understand each other. With another entry into Jessup's Journal and Marshall Lee, I'm Doug Jessup, ABC4 News.